find your fine salt. Um, the first thing I notice in here is the smell. It is oh, like crazy. You should come back in, in the, the heat of the summer. And yeah. I don't knock you on your ass for this. But <laughs> okay. Um, no, this is wonderful. I mean, it does uh, have an aroma. Eddie had an idea. We bought this one we were here yesterday. Yeah. Which one? A red house scented candle. Yeah. Because yeah. 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 like the oak or the, the it, oh, it's, it's more powerful here than like in the bottle. Oh, sure. Sure. And that gives it like a rustic, manly. <laughs> Ooh, I did get it, man. Or even, yeah. Yeah. Can I sleep in here tonight? I never get sick of it. Yeah, so this building is totally uninsulated, no heater, humidifier. We want the barrels uh, nearly exposed to the elements. Mm -hmm. uh, if not just so we can say that the whiskeys bear the unique signature of the Driftless region. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, climate, humidity, all this is. is going to have an effect on the product uh, and make for a product that's unique to the region. Um, like we were saying earlier, this is kind of where you let go of the reins and, and, and nature takes over. And you cross your fingers and hope for the best. Again, as, as consistent as we can make it in there, mm -hmm. this is kind of where things get weird. So uh, you know, it turns out that every barrel and every batch is different from the last. Even, uh, you know, sister barrels that were racked together at the same time, made the same day, uh, uh, they could be very different from each other. Um, especially since every barrel in this building uh, is experiencing the change of seasons in a different way. Yeah. Um, they're experiencing the humidity and the, uh, the sunlight, the, 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 the temperature in a different way. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, like, um, you know, we do other shows on different things, and like Scotch. Yeah. You know, it's known for the regions, sure. and each region is different. You know, if you're close to the water, it gets it a little Absolutely. different taste. I don't want to say salt, but it's there. You can there's a briminess to it. You know, yeah. and just different regions show different things that they maybe expert have more expertise on. Sure. And this, this is a great example of that. Okay. Because you're exposing something to extreme temperatures uh, and you're in the driftless region right. right so I think that's really wonderful I mean this is like very authentic yeah you, you know, know I, I can't honestly say that we've been around long enough or we're experienced enough to say like you know specifically how the product is very different from any other but uh, you can guarantee that the uh, the uh, the climate of the region, the uh, you know, the change in temperatures is having an effect. On the this uh, yeah, this year was we went through a heck of a winter, ice cold. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Were yeah, you afraid right. that this would do something to it? Not afraid. No, I mean, I, just, I mean, sort of hope it was it's harder on the equipment than it was. In yeah, the hard, harder on the on us <laughs> in the distillery than out here. I mean, it's certainly not going to freeze. Um, really, below fifty or fifty five degrees. Uh, the aging process reaches to a halt, um, but uh, you know that's creating more of a uh, an extreme change. You know, uh, when yeah. summer comes, the uh, the barrels are going to start swelling up and doing this breathing okay. motion that they do. Okay. That does all the work. Yeah, I was talking about you're talking about the expansion of the barrel sure. in the summer. So in the winter, is this when you see a little leakage? I wouldn't say any time of year particularly you get the leakers. You do get the leakers, but uh, no, they're sort of sort of at random. Okay. Honestly. Um, so yeah, in the hotter months we do get some temperature fluctuation. The, the ones up top do seem to age a little more um, quicker, a little more quickly than the, the ones on the lower end. Now uh, being just two guys, we're not able to rotate all of these uh, throughout the year. So typically we'll pull from different parts of the distillery when we're making our blends. Mm. Um, and to give you an idea again, one stack of 10 barrels here, that's about what we're putting on every day. Um, so we're just shy of barrel number 5,000. We've yeah, got, almost. I'd say we're right about 4,000 barrels in this warehouse. Ever made. So that's what you've seen that's here. Right. Yeah, just under 5,000 yeah. total ever made. And so will you know which one is your 5,000th? We will. Oh, yeah. Okay. What are we going to do with that? Are you guys trying to, uh, are you guys going to put it in there? And do something special? I don't know. Six six thousand won't come long after. So <laughs> oh okay. Um, now nah, we'll we'll get a nice picture with it. But. Yeah. And then as far as where we're getting these barrels from, right, Max and Nathan, it's so the majority of twenty fives are all Kelvin Cooperage. Uh, yep. Yeah, all the twenty fives are from Kelvin Cooperage. Um, we have a few thirty gallon barrels from the Barrel Mill out of Minnesota. 
um, some from uh, Barrels Unlimited out of California. Um, we've recently switched our all the 53s. Well, we started out just with Kelvin Cooperage again, um, but we've recently switched over to Zach Cooperage, Z A K. They're out of Bardstown. Yeah. So, for the most part, uh, the barrels are coming to us from Kentucky. Also, that's also. Awesome. It was a was a Cooper Tech in Wisconsin until the sixties. Yeah, it would have been nice out of Madison, Wisconsin, but uh, we can't say we sourced those. In the league now. We'll give the disclaimer that we always give. So we're heading now over to the the bottling room, auxiliary warehouse. Uh, it's not part of our traditional tour, so pardon the pardon the mess. But uh... Ooh, oh my god! Yeah, so this gives you up. this is this is more what the the, the roof house would smell like. In uh, yeah, July. In the summertime. Oh, yeah. wow. That's yeah. piercing. <laughs> I, I mean, I love it. I love it. It's good. This is like having a big glass in here and just like, <sighs> it's boozy. Yeah. yeah. Oh, like um, so this building is temperature controlled as it houses our finished liquor inventory and our bottling line. But in here, we've also got all of our 25 and 30 gallon barrels, um, all of our, our grain. Um, some of our empty glass, um, yeah, and our complete finished liquor inventory, so. You know, this building really does hit home, like, we not only make all of our spirits, like, we do, these guys do the bottling, they do the labeling, they hand write, you know, the barrel pit, like, it's very hands-on, and yeah. a lot of hard work that goes into it. Yeah, it's been a busy couple of years. Thank you. Well, that's good though. Yeah, you're welcome. You're yeah, welcome. I noticed that um, you got your little things already wrapped up, and you got a little bottle on top. So is that like a little reminder of what's well, that's, that's, that's a paperweight, but that uh, that order is going out to uh, 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 Frank Liquor tomorrow. We got these three skids over here that it's in Michigan today. Actually, we're looking that up. Oh, but um, um, okay. these are all single barrel picks for Iowa and Kentucky. Uh, yeah. But you just do that, the little bottle. You can see that just to, uh, uh, oh, it's a paperweight. You were yeah, not exactly. I, I took it as you're joking. <laughs> no, it's literally a paperweight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it depends how you're sending a little sample. Hey, this is what it is, bro. It depends how rough of a day they're having. You know? <laughs> no, but that's what we'll do. We'll I just thought out. it was like, a gift. Yeah. It's a paperweight. To, you know. I'm having to pull samples pretty regularly, and um, when we <laughs> run into one that we're not crazy about, maybe need some time, I'll usually just say, don't bring that with us, leave that here. Um, so I'm, I'll admit that's probably not a very good sample there, so it's a paperweight. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, it's sitting on the purchase order that I got to get signed for whenever they. Oh, they I just like it maybe. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're giving somebody a little gift. Hey, here you go. Kind of funky, right? Yeah. Yeah. So do you, uh, is this where you do the blending? Um, I would do that uh, in the in the distillery, I guess. That's where we... Okay. But yeah, yeah well, we're still pulling from these barrels primarily. We've got our 25s moving into the 30s. So we'll pull samples like that, get, like Max said, maybe 20 plus uh, samples together and, and formulate blends from that. Yeah. Usually do that. I do that in the VIP room. We like to go where it's nice and quiet. And you know, too many distracting no sensory overload kind of thing. Just kind of like to focus on on the blending. But uh, yeah, and then we'll come out here, drag all the barrels that we found into the distillery, and then dump them in there. And then just dump them. Do you, do you um, let them sit and before you bottle, or do you um do you mix really. them with a giant mixer? Or? Uh, no, we well we got a. The thing that we mix them with, the <laughs> paddle. Uh, yeah, kind of. Yeah, so we'll we'll dump them into a big tank. We'll filter it with some cheesecloth just to catch, you know, the biggest chunks that are coming out of the barrel. You'll usually get some char. Um, so uh, catch as much of that as we can. And we'll mix the thing up and proof it down to uh, bottle proof, ninety six in our case. And, yeah, then drag the tank over here and bottle in the bottling room back. Uh, who has the final say that the bottle's ready in? This is the taste that we want to have. Um, you know, I'll I'll consult uh, the, some of the other staff. You know, I'll go around, or sometimes I'll shake down the uh, the diners and say, "What do you think? Any mm -hmm. opinion?" But uh, yeah, I mean, me and him. At the end of the day, this is kind of like your art. This is what you <laughs> much as taste, it, much as it can be. I'd, I'd say that's the most artistic part of what we do. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, yeah. Um, yeah, it's kind of neat. That's really I get a kick out of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, the whole process you guys showed us—that's really great. 
in the distillery. Um, but I do not want to be the guy who makes the decision. Hey, this is put it in. So, so you guys, this is like, it's awesome. I mean, any changes that we make, we really do have to jump through a lot of hoops in order to get that approved. But on, on this end of things, yeah, we do have that, that kind of freedom. And um, in terms of production, I'm not going to say what we do is, you know, artistic and only that, you know, uh, maybe you could consider a commitment to consistency, quality, and craft sanitation that's uh i mean as, as artistic i guess as that gets but you know this is where we get the the blending is where we get to spread our wings a little bit okay yeah and uh yeah again hopefully in the future we can come up with some new products all right got some cool ideas right. yeah you guys say we're gonna floss the steel and malt like like malt our own barley and <laughs> come on, uh, that would be exciting. Of course it would. We would need a lot more staff to do that. Yeah, that's a ways that's a ways out. As much as I would love to, yeah. So I'm the, I'm the totes. Uh, so again, being completely transparent, as I was telling you guys yesterday, right? Our brandy, we do not make our own brandy. Uh, we source it from France. Uh, however, we do finish it and bottle it here. So, mm -hmm. aged mm -hmm. five years in French oak in France, shipped back in these totes, and then we finish it in a spent bourbon barrel uh, for 12 more months, and then we bottle it here. So, it is finished and bottled. We just can't take complete credit for making it. Well, right. I'll tell you this it's one of the best brandies I've ever had. Oh. I really, I, that's like my number one thing that I actually like here. Besides right. the right. it's like uh, there's something about it that's really different. Um, I, I'm a cognac guy, sure. Okay. So it's like that's kind of how I got into this a little bit. Oh, yeah. But to me, that brandy is like it's, good. it's good. That does make it's a lot. Really good. And I mean, early on, we wanted to get some dark spirits on the shelf in a hurry, and mm -hmm. you know, uh, so yeah, we had that brought in and uh, finished in used bourbon barrels. But um, I mean, definitely had to have it just for the Wisconsin crowd. You know. Yeah, well, whatever you're doing, just don't don't stop. I mean, that's good. That's what I'm, 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 I'm telling you. Don't have these guys start making their own brandy. Just keep right. it. Just well, keep sourcing that one. Well, in the future, maybe if you guys want to wizard up something, that's fine. But I'm just saying, whatever you're doing with that, it's good. And I had a cocktail, uh, a couple cocktails yesterday. It was wonderful. In the Manhattan, was, you said? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yes, I had the five-year reserve Manhattan. It was, it's awesome. Very good one. Yes. I'm glad you like it. But uh, let's take a look at the bottling room. Yep. Yeah, let's... Yeah, so once you see the bottling facility, where you really go, wow, these guys are doing everything, and they're doing everything by by hand, essentially. So it is uh, quite the process. <laughs> okay. So six bottles annual. Pour. I know it's shabby, right? <laughs> yeah. So um, I explained the blending process. Kind of, we'll dump all the barrels into a, a tank. We'll then transfer all that into this bottling tank here. Um, that comes out of the tank, through this pump, we uh, push it through this cartridge filter, we you know, gently filter just to catch any solids from the barrel, like I said, mm -hmm. um, not, not enough to strip away a whole lot of character. Um, that then goes up to this six head filler. Um, we're able to fill six bottles at a time here. Uh, from there, you know, hand corked, uh, we'll Stick one of these capsules on each bottle. Um, we have our little heat gun here. <laughs> and uh, up until recently, we were hand applying labels, often handwritten, but we did recently just get this uh, automated labeling machine. Uh, the bottles run through here. Uh, the front and back label are applied simultaneously. It's even got a nice little printer here, so we can print all the information. Uh, this was a barrel strength rye whiskey, but 60% ABV, 120 proof, 48 months old. It was barrel number 344. Uh, we alternate who bottled it, but it's usually both of us. So, <laughs> you know. Well, since we're here with the bottles, do you want to talk about um, oh. the thumbprints and... Uh Oh yeah, yeah. So, so whenever you pick up a bottle, not only do the thumbprints in the bottle act as an awesome gripper because this is pretty heavy-duty glass. Um, it's actually one is Brian's thumbprint, one is Renee's, and that's their way essentially of saying they have their own personal touch in every bottle that leaves the distillery. Or as they like to say, two thumbs up. Right? Yeah. As you guys have felt these bottles, they're not light when they're full of booze. So, mm -hmm. um, I think we've yet to even break one. 
Uh, you, we can ship them, but uh, they no, they don't shatter. That's you know, it's, it's a, a hefty bottle. It's a tank. Well, and the other thing about that too is Renee always says they wanted something special about the bottle, so that if people didn't remember it by say the label or the name, they would be able to say, "Oh, it's the bottle with the two thumbprints on mm. the side." It's wonderful. Mm -hmm. I mean, your bottles are definitely distinctive than other bottles, so um, Thank you. I like that a lot. And I don't know how come other companies don't do that more. That's. I think you're getting the craft yeah. feel of, yeah. of this. Yeah. 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 The first time I saw this before I even tried it, walked into Ben's and the bottle just jumped at, off the shelf and it picked it up and I, and I actually felt that and I was like, what? It, I had no idea why, but I walked up to the counter with it and I bought it and went home with it. So it certainly worked on me. Mm -hmm. it, it really, it caught my eye and the tactile feel of it, it was just wonderful. Yeah, and, and again with Renee with her uh, her artistry background, she designs, correct? Yeah, she she, designed, she, yeah, she yeah, designed the she, bottle, the logo, right? Yeah, and all so of it. She, She's very hands-on. Um, she does a lot of speaking engagements too and just goes out and shares Driftless Glen. It's a huge passion of Brian and Renee's and you're going to see a lot more from Driftless Glen. And, in the coming years. We hope so. We hope so. Yeah, this is not just a hobby for them. Like, yeah. We get that question asked a lot. Oh, you know, your owners, is this their hobby? No, this is no. not. Well, well, this doesn't look like a hobby. There's, there's, yeah. That's not a serious there's, distillery going Yeah, on. there's nothing hobby about this sucker, so. Wow, that's wonderful. Yeah. Anything else you want to, any points you got to make or? Well, I mean, in time, uh, this room is going to be filled with fully automated equipment. This is the first piece of it. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, in time, Hopefully we'll be able to set a bottle on the line and have it shoot right back out. We'll do that thing perfectly done on the way out. Exactly. So, well, one tricky part too with this process is, you know, Max and Nathan, I'm sure we're thrilled when they when they received their automated labeler. Mm -hmm. However, when we do do single barrel picks, right, we still put that hand selected by uh, high V, hand selected by Ben's Beverage Depot, hand selected by Cyclone or Iowa Whiskey Chasers. They still have to put all those on by hand. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Yeah. Do we have an example? Do you have a bottle with any of those labels on it back here, Max? Just to give you an idea. Yeah. Yeah, I will show you one later. Yeah. Oh, they've seen it because they've seen it on the show. We have one on the show at the table. Yeah. The label. Yeah. 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 Well, and a lot of those too, they can decide what strength they want it at too. Yeah, that's what trend this year has hands down been the cast strength. I mean, that has been, especially for the whiskey groups that we've dealt with, uh, the Speakeasy group out of Madison, Iowa Whiskey Chasers, uh, the group from Kentucky, uh, Mythical Bourbon Group, um, they all are screaming for that cast strength. That's what they want. Um, and then uh, one, one guy I did forget to mention, so Brian, I'm sorry, but Brian at Hy-Vee Oakland in, in Cedar Rapids. They did a barrel pick with us as well this year, so sorry, Brian, for getting in for getting the first You need to go talk to Nate. Right. And Johnson Avenue. Johnson Avenue. Nate, I'm coming for you. Mm -hmm. Get ready. <laughs> There's a block from my house. <laughs> Don't forget Johnny from Squaw Creek. <laughs> yeah. Or, or one of the other 50 uh, high V's. Yeah, it's, it's wild there. So much love. The high V's been, even the high V's in Madison have been really big supporters of us as well. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, they should. yeah. So it's been, it's been really cool. That's really neat. Okay. Anything else? <laughs> <laughs>